The old exam questions from Lean Operations are a lot like the chapter itself. They're mostly qualitative, meaning we have to do a little bit of reading. Let's look. One common illustration used to demonstrate the philosophy of just-in-time inventory management, another name for lean, shows a lake with sharp rocks hiding water beneath or hiding beneath the water surface. Which of the following is true? Okay. Oh, we test these things one at a time. This is the allegory of the lake, which you might remember from class. Let's see if I can get this working under the document camera. There is an illustration much better than my sketching in the book. Not that page. Grr. Aha! That's what I was trying to get. Oh, right, the allegory of the lake. There's you in a boat on the lake, and the lake is being drained, and it's revealing the rocks, but you're busy removing the rocks. What did that have anything to do with lean operations? We have to remember it is a teaching story because each thing in the picture represents something in lean operations. You're in the boat. The water is inventory, lean, draining away inventory, right, and so the shop rocks are the problems that are revealed. So this is what we need to hold in our mind right here while we test these statements because this is basically a quiz on that allegory. The sharp rocks represent safety stock. That is false. Safety stock is inventory. Um, nope, that's the water. Wait a minute, the water represents mistakes and defects produced by your manufacturing system? No, those would be a really good example of sharp rocks. So we kick that one out. Water hiding the rocks illustrates how high inventory levels hide production problems. True, that's the whole point of the story. Okay, so only the first thing tested true here. You would have snagged one point in either of those two cases. Yeah, more reading. Let's look at this. Suppose you are visiting a friend who works in a factory with a Kanban system in place to control production. Three Kanban cards are hanging on a board next to your friend's workstation, while another identical Kanban card is attached to a container he's busy filling with parts he makes at that workstation. Okay. Five more matching Kanban cards are already attached to full containers he's placed in the convenient parking area in front of his workstation. Even as he works, the supervisor walks over, removes two of the cards from his board and puts them in her pocket. Supervisor then walks away. Which of the following? Okay, oh, come on. The best explanation for what just happened. All right, so that was in a paragraph of verbal explanation of your friend is working in a single card Kanban system. We had an image for that. Maybe I can snag that one in the book. Oh, yeah, here we go. There we go. It was just a verbal description of this. So your friend's over here working. There was, what, three cards hanging on the board, one card attached to the box that he was filling. There's the three hanging on the board. There was a bunch other in the parking area where all the full boxes are being stored. Now, what is it that we need to answer this question to go through and figure out which of the following is the best explanation for why the supervisor yanked one of these, or excuse me, two of these, two of these away took two off the board and put them in her pocket. Oh, okay, it's really a quiz on remembering what's the whole point of a Kanban card system? What's the whole point of a Kanban loop? A Kanban loop controls inventory levels. So, which of these sound rational with respect to that? The supervisor wants to increase the level of work in process in inventory in the system. That is false because it's, I just said, the number of Kanban cards controls the level of inventory, but the more Kanban cards, the more inventory, right? It's like permission for inventory to exist. And the fewer Kanban cards, the less inventory. And she took two of them away. So she took away permission for inventory to exist. That top one doesn't make any sense. The supervisor is worried about your friend making defective parts. That might or might not be true in this situation, but it doesn't explain why she took away two of the cards. There are much better and more direct ways to address that. Say, so say, eh, I'm not in love with that. I'm kicking that out. The supervisor doesn't think your friend has enough work to do. We can kick that straight out without hesitation because being permission each card for inventory to exist, it's also permission to produce inventory. And if she thinks he's not busy enough, why is she taking away permission for him to be busy?
Okay, now D, the supervisor needed those two cards to pick a lock on the employee bathroom. That's possible. I'm labeling it false because I know how this movie ends, right? It's possible, but do you really think that that's going to turn out to be the absolute best answer? No, the absolute best answer, the whole point of a Kanban loop right here, is to control the level of working process in the system. And if the supervisor took away two cards, the supervisor wants to reduce the level of inventory in the system. There. All right, now, next one. Oh, the next one is the only vaguely quantitative one here. Let me find my scratch work. Your department provides a component for the assembly department. Their usage of the component is 480 units per eight hour day. Okay, your department can usually fill each container with 60 units and about 40 minutes and there's some sort of efficiency factor. What is it we have to do? How many containers or cards should be used for this component? This is a classic, do you remember Toyota's formula? The number of Kanban cards, D times L times 1 plus X divided by C. This is an invitation to use that formula. How many containers or cards? All right, so the only thing we need to do is pick these things out of here. All right, one of them, C, container size, I see is pretty obvious, fills each container with 60 units. That's definitely my C, 60. Oh, and this mysterious X is the mysterious efficiency factor that management imposes from the outside. Uh, okay, so 20%. I already know that we're going to need that to be in a decimal place, so that's point two. Now, D is the demand or the usage of this item that's going to be controlled, and L is the lead time or the total turnaround time to fill a box. Ooh, L in about, can fill each container in about 40 minutes. L, L, L. So I write that 40 minutes. And then, yeah, it said their usage rate, D is demand or usage, is 4,800 units per day. So I could write that, D equals 4,800 a day. Now, you might be thinking, okay, fine, then I put these numbers in there, and wait a minute, that's not the answer. Yeah, that's not the answer. There's only, this is a very simple formula. There's only really one thing that can go wrong with the formula, and that's just look out for it. And I was engineering that situation, is that D and L, have to be talking about the same unit of time. Otherwise, you just get nonsense back. Notice that L, when we were jotting down information, is in minutes. The lead time on a container is 40 minutes. D is the usage per day. Minutes and day, those are two different things. There's a bunch of different ways you can just, it's logic, adjust the two so they're talking about the same thing. The easiest thing for this particular problem is a compromise, is why don't we change them both to hours, right? Because that's easy to adjust. L equals 40 divided by 60 is two-thirds of an hour. And notice that they told us how many hours there are in the day. Okay, so that D could be 4,800 divided by 8 is 600 an hour. Take that, put it here, right? Take this, put it here. Don't touch the C or that. Put them in there. That's where you will get simple arithmetic. Then at that point, yeah, the best number of cards to control that particular item would be eight cards, according to Toyota's formula. Oh, all right. Now, seems like there should be three other questions chasing around here. Ah, oh, yeah, back to qualitative. Which of the following are general principles associated with lean operations? Okay. Reduce fixed costs and setup costs associated with your system. True, we talked about that. It helps you knock down the order sizes. Improve material handling and facility layout in your system. That is true. You're going to have a bunch of orders. You're going to be handling a lot of them. You'll need to improve handling. Increase the number of outside vendors or suppliers you deal with. That is false. You actually, if you want to correct this, want to reduce that. So the top two tested true. That is C, right? So that's half. That's, whoops. Yeah, that's half. Ooh, lots of winners. Or that's half. Okay, now, next question. Oh, more reading. You have introduced a Kanban system into a machine shop to control the production of a common part used by many different sub-assemblies at many different workstations. 
the Kanban system has been operating for two weeks and you've received many complaints. That's probably what this question is about. These complaints are coming from people who build the subassemblies because now they cannot always find the part in stock exactly when they need it. That's why they're complaining. Which of the following best describes how you should address these complaints? Again, we're talking about how you should best best respond to those complaints. Okay, so they are using the stuff in a Kanban system and they can't always get a hold of one of those boxes like from the picture when they want it. Hmm. Increase the number of Kanban cards in the loop, forcing the system to circulate more cards in the production loop. What would that do? Well, that would be permission for there to be more boxes of parts, because it's one card per box, meaning there'd be more boxes chasing around. People are complaining they can't get a hold of a box always when they need it. That actually, I think we're done here, would do it. You want to increase the level of work in process in the system because apparently you are running a bit too lean. Now we can test the other ones just in case. Tell the complainers to be quiet. Always an option, probably not the best one. Confiscate a few of the Kanban cards, forcing the system to circulate fewer cards in the production loop. That's more like what the supervisor did in the problem that had the option of picking the lock on the employee bathroom. Okay, that's the exact opposite of what you would want to do in this case because the complaining would increase. Create a bigger stocking area with better marking on containers that hold this part. That's just kind of a made up thing. It wouldn't really affect the problem. Cancel the Kanban system project and go back to the methods that were in place before you introduced it. Certainly an option, arguably not the best option in that the first thing that you should try to do is add some more inventory to the system and that is choice A. Okay, so last one. Oh, another triple true false. Muta is another term for waste. Yeah, that's kind of keyword-ish. Le operations are considered push style inventory plan. Wait, huh? No, that's false. Lean is pull, if you wanted to correct it. Okay. Lean operations rely on reaction to signals when operating, as opposed to following precisely calculated plans for inventory management. That's true. That's, that's basically another definition for a pull system. So the top and the bottom test true. That's one and three. That's a half a point. That one's a half a point. Oh, okay. And then we are done with these questions.